it seems that South Park has presented us with an interesting dilemma once again. That's right, I watched South Park into the Pandaverse, and uh, not the Pandaverse, but the Pandur verse and south park hits it right on the head again they want to play both sides of the fence because you know trey parker and matt stone especially trey parker are multi 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 millionaires i think they paid 300 million dollars for south park some outrageous amount of money but what you have here is uh fascinating because yeah i thought it was good some of the best South Park I've seen in a very long time. And uh, they kind of hit the nail on the head. But let's take a look at exactly what they were skewering. Because this this line kind of sums it up. Again? Yeah, only this time it wasn't just me. They were taking all my favorite people and replacing them with diverse women complaining about the patriarchy. Will you check under the bed and make sure there's no Disney executives under there? I promise there's not. I'm scared, Mom. Will you please just look and make sure Kathleen Kennedy isn't under my bed? Get the chick to Kathleen Kennedy is under my bed. Oh, that's right. Kathleen Kennedy is here to stalk everyone you know. I am the man you know as E from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And uh, please be sure, whenever I watch videos, I always forget to like and or subscribe. I get through them and I move to the next video. I'm like, oh, is I supposed to do something? And I'm sure your favorite creators and mine would be grateful if you did that. So anyway, uh, wow, what an interesting, what an interesting uh, movie. I, it was forty nine minutes, so I don't know exactly an extra long episode of South Park. I don't think it ever really lost its steam. Um, I don't find South Park as hilarious as I used to, but there were definitely some really solid jokes in this, and uh, the writing style is also fairly interesting because I feel like they write. St- they show. I, I, they had an episode of them showing you how they write the show in like three days, and this kind of felt like they did some research and then were like, "Oh yeah, this is the problem because this is annoying." Um. Ultimately, what what is even the plot of this? Um. Cartman wants to play Baldur's Gate three. That's a fundamental fact, and the multiverse is getting in the way because he keeps having nightmares about diverse women replacing him and that Kathleen Kennedy is is hunting him. He gets sucked into the multiverse, which is universes, and finds a Kathleen Kennedy in the actual, his Kathleen Kennedy in that verse. And they find out that Disney has been playing with the Panderstone and the Panderstone is cutting through different multiverses because, you know, multiverses are annoying and dumb. And everything that Cartman said was true, that there are, you know, that he's been replaced by diverse women and and yada, yada, yada. And uh, they have to close the hole because Stan's dad was refuses to learn how to do anything. Because there, there's like an A and the, there's a B plot. The B plot is that no one knows how to fix anything anymore. And the only way they know how to fix things is by calling repairmen and repairmen become the new billionaires because it just keeps costing more and more money to repair anything. And it and AI puts everyone out of jobs except for the people who can actually fix things. You know, like the fundamental things that that work in society, like plumbing and and fixing, you know, stove doors and stuff like that. So it's kind of a shot at Elon Musk and uh Mark Zuckerberg because ultimately the repairmen become the billionaires and they're they're fighting with each other over bigger and bigger stakes in space and and Stan, you know, wants all of his college debt forgiven. They they attack a university and they end up <laughs> like <laughs> they spent twenty thousand dollars to get a catapult so that they could destroy the university or the college they went to, and then it throws a giant rock through the college window and a repairman just comes out and and destroys it so i like don't know i don't even know that they know where their jokes are going i think they just they have these observations on society and they're just like we don't really like they're not really making a point and it's funny because both sides have claimed that they're right on this because at the end they're like 
you shouldn't be extreme on either side. Sure, there should be diverse and, and you know, people in movies should be allowed to see each other, you know, whoever they want to see in movies. But at the same time, if you pander to anyone or you just try to, you know, push the message, you're 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 just going to destroy everything because obviously Disney's failing right now. What what I found interesting is I I suspect most people don't know who Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy are. That would be my my sneaking suspicion. I mean, if you were into this type of stuff and you're watching here with me, you probably know because that means you're on the inside and you care about these type of things. But your average person probably couldn't tell you who, like, if you ask the next three people you meet that you're friendly with, if they know who Kathleen Kennedy or Bob Iger are, they're like, ah, uh, Star Wars, maybe? They don't know that Kathleen Kennedy's been, you know, the she's the head of Lucasfilm and does all is in charge of all of the Star Wars movies that you've seen since the prequels. Yeah, that's right. Everything after the prequels, Kathleen Kennedy is responsible for. And Bob Iger is the CEO of Disney, who was widely considered one of the greatest CEOs until he retired and came back and ended up destroying his legacy because, of course, he pandered to Kathleen Kennedy. So, of course, of course, uh, you have Cartman worried, you know, he's scared of Kathleen Kennedy because she's going to, that's the only line, you know, I would have liked to clip that line, where put a chick in it. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, that that's real funny. Cartman jumping through windows, even though the windows open is really funny. He just smashes right through windows. He's like, oh my God, Kathleen Kennedy. And uh, Butters getting changed is pretty fun. Like, I like the fact that all the women who play the characters, they have no idea what lines they're reading, and they read them so sincerely, and they clearly have no idea, like, how do I do a Butters impression? <laughs> or how do I do Cartman? And it's like, they don't even bother trying. They're just like, whatever. Um the, all that stuff is pretty funny, and I felt like it, the jokes were all good. I'd give it a solid B plus. Um, not, not really an A minus. I don't know. There's something about South Park that's kind of been tarnished for me. Maybe I'm just hallucinating. Who knows? But what is very strange about this is Forbes, South Park, joining the Panderverse review Disney satire at its finest. Who allowed your senior contributor to work like this? Clearly, the tides have turned on Disney, and people are looking at them, especially in the financial world, and saying, you guys need to get your junk together. The brilliance of South Park's latest special, Joining the Panderverse, is in Matt Stone and Trey Parker's ability to skewer all sides of a fraught cultural debate. See, they took both sides of it too. And Trey Parker wrote and directed this. And you have to realize Matt Stone Matt Stone is a stoner and doesn't actually do anything other than like one or two voices. So, you know, it's fine. The guy is fine, but he's not he's not the creative uh, you know, brilliant. He's the he's the the guy who does the stuff that's not that brilliant. So anyway, they call it Disney's laziness and the general laziness of token diversity, over reliance on multiverse and so forth, while also taking jabs at the other side of the aisle and all the lazy anti woke YouTubers and fans who spend all their time complaining about diversity. That's the one part that I thought was pretty funny and weird, and I guess it just depends on how you interpret it. Kathleen Kennedy and, and Cartman are talking about things, and she's like, you know, I started putting, you know, diverse people into it because I, I thought that would make the world a better place. And then I got all the hate mail. And that just drove me crazy. And I just had to do more and more of it. And, and she's like, I started with several thousand letters a day. And then like 10 to 12, 10,000 letters a day. And Cartman's like, yeah, I wrote all of that. And he's like, I really think I wrote like, like 12,000. But if you only got 10,000, that's okay. He's like, I probably went a little too far. And that's what people don't like. The minority is what's complaining. You're you're overrepresenting the minority in in doing your tokenism for your token diversity, and then you're overrepresenting 
the people that hate you because there's no, the people that hate you eventually just fall into apathy and don't care and stop watching. That's what's happened to Marvel. That's what's happening to Star Wars. There's a small crowd of people that you have pandered to and they kind of like what you're doing, but they don't really like it. And then there's a small crowd of people who really hate you and the rest of us just don't care. I review things because I have to, not because I love it. I was saying something the, uh, to somebody the other day about how I I don't watch things that I like anymore. <laughs> I have to watch everything because it all has a message or has to be something. You know, I try to give like a pretty neutral tone to it, but I thought this was interesting. But it's funny because both sides are claiming a victory in South Park, and I'm like, well, that's stupid because South Park doesn't even know what in the world they're... I don't think they understand their point. They're just like, yeah, this is how it is. It doesn't really matter, and they're just playing both sides. So, I don't know. If you got to see it, let me know if you liked it. It, it, it's, it was good. Not amazing, but it was good. But I, I'm, I'm a little... I'm not even annoyed that everybody uh, took... Is like they're all claiming that this is a victory for them. Wow, that's just stupid. I think the only thing that we can take from this that I find interesting is that they named and explained exactly why Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger suck. And that's about it. I mean, I didn't take any, like, I don't care about the billionaire stuff. There's a whole bunch of, like, capitalism doesn't work while they're calling people on their cell phones. I, I just think that South Park revels in calling out the absurdity of everything without truly understanding what point they're making at the end of it. And the, maybe the point is that they are trying to be pointless because I suspect as I have been watching uh, or I've been at least paid attention to South Park since whenever it came out, 1997, in the past like 20 or 30 years, whatever it is. So, um Yeah. And they even said, it's not the funniest they've ever been, but it was still funny. Yes. This per this is the, the this is funny about the article is that Eric Kane could not even enjoy everything everywhere all at once because it had a multiverse. Bro, that was a good movie. And you don't have to worry about Marvel's multiverse to enjoy a movie. So you ye can you can definitely segregate those things. It's not that hard. But what did you guys think? Let me know. Did you not get to see it? If you didn't get to see it, I definitely recommend it. You should do it. I think it's fun that they brought Kathleen Kennedy and Bob Iger and Disney in general to the normies' minds to like give them an idea of what's going on. Overall, it was fine. It's good. Not amazing, but good. And uh, if you like what we here do, what we do here, what he, we here do is secure whatever we want. Whenever we want. We do what we want, because I do what I want. So anyway, we have a live podcast you can check out. Uh, we stream in here, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday nights. We also have it on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes. We've been monetized. You could do super chats and uh, memberships and blah, 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 and all that things and more. We love all y'all. Thank you. Check out some additional videos. Like, subscribe, share. Do all that good stuff. We are growing, but we need your help. And that's the only way I can do it is by asking. Because I often forget to like and subscribe myself. So I know what happens. So just a reminder. Anyway, we love all y'all. Thank you so much for listening. But I am on to the next one. <laughs>